This is the video for section 5.2 about adding and subtracting decimals. We're going to go through the three steps for adding or subtracting decimals and do an example as we go along. So the first step is to write the decimal so that the decimal points line up, just like we did with whole numbers when we were lining up the different place values. In our example we have 7.2 plus 3.27, so we're going to write this so that our decimal point is lined up. So where the decimal point is in the 7.2, we're going to put it in the same place for the 3 and 27 hundredths. So now we have our places lined up. We have the ones place lined up, the tenths place lined up, and the hundredths place. Now we add or subtract just like we would for whole numbers. And remember that in this place, if you're confused by not having a hundredths place showing in our top number, you can always write a zero in there. So now we have zero plus seven is seven, two plus two is four, and then also in our answer we want to put the decimal point lined up just like it was in our problem. Now we have seven plus three is ten, so we write the zero here, carry the one, and we get ten and forty-seven hundredths. And notice how everything is lined up in our answer just like it was when we wrote our problem out. So we have the hundreds place lined up, the tens place, the decimal point, the ones place, and the tens place. And I was saying we can always write extra zeros to the right of the last digit without changing the value of our number. And sometimes this is going to help us line up the place values. So if we have 85 minus 13 and 26 hundredths, we could write this as 85 and a decimal point, and then we could put two zeros so that we have something to go along with the tenths and the hundredths place in our 13 and 26 hundredths. So we're just writing those two zeros in after the decimal point. Now when we subtract on this one, we are going to have to borrow. That's another good reason for writing the zeros in here. If we have 0 minus 6, we're going to have to borrow and make that a 10. Remember when we do that, we'll, we'll make this one a 9. And we actually borrowed to do that, so we're going all the way over to this place and borrowing. So when we do our subtraction, we have 10 minus 6 is 4, then 9 minus 2 is 7, 4 minus 3 is 1, and then 8 minus 1 is 7. Notice again how all of our place values are lined up and our decimal point is lined up. Let's do some examples. And remember when we're using positive and negative decimals, we use the same ideas that we did when we were adding or subtracting integers. In this case we have two negative decimal values, so we would treat this just like we did when we had two negative integers that we were adding. In other words, we actually want to add our absolute values, so 2.7 and 3.2. This is going to give us 9. We write the decimal point right here underneath those decimal points, and 5. And then we're going to take the sign that these two had in common. So that makes that a negative 5 and 9 tenths. In this next one, we just have three positive values. The trick with this one is going to be getting everything lined up correctly. We have our 5 and 3 hundredths, then 16, and we want to just make it so the decimal point comes out in the same place. So we have our 16 and 988 thousandths, and then for this last one, we have the 0 before the decimal point, and then our decimal point, and then we have our 6 thousandths. So we have everything lined up neatly in columns. And again, if it confuses you not to have a place in our top number here, we can always write a zero in there. Zero plus eight plus six is 14. So we have to carry a one. Then we have one plus three is four, plus eight is 12. So we write down the two and carry a one again. And we have one plus zero plus nine is 10. So we're writing down our zero and carrying the one. And remember our decimal point here is going to go right in line with those other decimal points. Then we have one plus five is six, plus six is 12. 
So we're carrying the 1 again, and then we have 1 plus 1 is 2. That gives us a final answer of 22 and 24 thousandths. All right, in this one we're subtracting. So again, we're just lining things up. And now we can just take 8 minus 2 is 6. Our decimal point goes right there. And we just have zeros over here, so we can just write the zero there. Our answer for this one would be just 6 tenths. And one more. Again, we're subtracting here. So we want to line up the 8 here with the 1's place in our first value. That way our decimal point gets lined up correctly. Now, since we're subtracting, we need to put a 0 here because we're going to have to borrow to do this. So we'll have to make this 10. And we're borrowing from this column, so that makes that a 4. Now we can do our subtraction. 10 minus 9 is 1. 4 minus 3 is 1. Our decimal point goes there. Oh, now we're going to have to borrow again since 7 is smaller than 8. So if we make that a 17, we're borrowing from this column, that makes that a 7. So we have 17 minus 8 is 9, and then 7, and the 1 just carry down. Our final answer for this one would be 179 and 11 hundredths. But this is a very important trick to remember if you're subtracting especially, is to go ahead and write as many zeros as you need to in your top number. Now we can estimate when we do operations on decimals. This is a good thing to do to help you know whether you got a reasonable answer or not. Let's look at a couple of examples of estimating when we're adding decimals. We can also estimate when we subtract decimals. We want to add 23 and 8 tenths and 32 and 1 tenth. Here would be our calculation for the exact answer. Again, we have this written so all of our place values are lined up. And if we add this, we get 8 plus 1 is 9, 3 plus 2 is 5, and 2 plus 3 is 5. So if we add this, we get 55.9. Now we'd like to do an estimate just to make sure that this is a reasonable answer. So we're going to round each of our two values here. So 23.8 we could round to 24. 32.1 we could round to 32. So notice we're rounding both of those to the ones place. So for our estimate, now we just have to add 24 and 32. If we add those two, we get 56. Notice how close our exact answer is to our estimate. That means that our exact answer was reasonable. And when we're rounding to check a calculation like this, we can choose which place value we want to round our numbers to so that we have something that's easy to do mentally. So we have three more examples here. We're going to do the actual addition or subtraction to get the exact answer, but we're also going to estimate to see if our answer was reasonable. So first of all, here's the problem for our exact answer. We could write in a 0 here. So we have 0 plus 7 is 7, 7 plus 8 is 15. We're carrying the 1. Here we get 18. We carry the 1 again. That gives us 4. Then here we have our decimal point. 3 plus 9 is 12, so we have to carry the 1 again. 1 plus 4 plus 8 would give us 13. If we carry the 1, then we get 1 plus 2 is 3. So here's our exact answer. Now let's do an estimate to see whether this is reasonable or not. For this one, let's estimate by rounding to the tenths place. So 43 and 97 thousandths, we would round to the nearest tenths place. That would give us 43.1. For our other value, we round this to the nearest tenths place, we get 289 and 4 tenths. So if we add these two, then here the 1 plus 4 gives us a 5. 3 plus 9 is 12. We carry the 1. We have 13 and 3. So our, our estimated answer was 332 and 5 tenths. 
And if you notice, if we took our exact answer and rounded it to the nearest tenth, we'd get the same thing. So this is a reasonable answer. Okay, let's look at the next one. It's a subtraction problem. And notice for this one, since we have more places in our bottom value than we did in our top value, we're going to have to add some zeros to the right in our top value. And look at what happens. We're going to have to borrow here. So if we make this a 10, then we're going to have to borrow from this place. Well, to do that, we have to make this a 10 and then borrow and make that a 9. Well, to make that a 10, we borrowed from this place so that becomes a 1. Now we can subtract. 10 minus 6 is 4, 9 minus 0 is 9, 1 minus 0 is 1, and 8 minus 5 is 3. We have our decimal point right there. So we ended up with 3 and 194 thousandths. Now if we want to estimate, let's just round this to the ones place. 8 and 2 tenths, if we rounded it to the nearest ones place, would give us 8 and 5 and 6 thousandths, if we rounded that to the ones place, that would give us 5. If we subtract those two, we get 3. If we took our exact answer and rounded that to the nearest ones place, that would be 3. So that means that we ha do have a reasonable answer here. Okay, one more. This is another subtraction problem. So we have 1,000 minus, and notice our 3 goes right here in the ones place and then we have our decimal point. We didn't even have a decimal point for the 1000 since it was a whole number. Now we're going to have to go back and write in our decimal point and write four zeros so that it matches up with the places we have in our second value. And we're going to have to do some borrowing here. So if we make that a 10, then we're borrowing from this place. We have to make this a 10 so that we can borrow and make it a 9 to do the same thing over here and we're just going to have to keep borrowing here all the way across and finally we have one that's not a zero here so we're borrowing from that one that's just going to make that a zero okay so we have 10 minus 7 is 3 9 minus 4 is 5 9 minus 9 is 0 9 minus 0 is 9 then we have our decimal point 9 minus 3 is 6, 9 minus 0 is 9, 9 minus 0 is 9, and for this one we had a 0, so we don't have anything there. This gives us an answer of 996 and 9,053 ten thousandths. Now let's do our estimate, and again let's just round this to the nearest ones place, since that's an easy one to round to. Well, the 1,000 isn't going to change. Our second number, if we round to the nearest ones place, we just get 3. So now if we subtract here, we still have to do a little bit of borrowing, but it's not quite as much. So we have 10 minus 3 is 7, and then 9 and 9. So we end up with 997. And notice again, if we took our exact answer and rounded it to the nearest ones place, we would also get 997. So that tells us this is a reasonable answer. Now we can also evaluate expressions using decimals as replacement values. Let's start out with evaluating x plus y if x is 5.5 and y is 2.8. So that means we're going to replace the x with 5.5 and the y with 2.8. And remember we do our parentheses and then put in our values. So we're putting in 5.5 for the x, 2.8 for the y, and now we're actually adding these two. So if we add these two, if we line them up vertically, we have 5 plus 8 is 13. We have to carry the 1, and that gives us 8.3. So that's where we got the 8.3 here. There are a lot of cases where we have to solve problems that involve adding and subtracting decimals. So let's say Allison went shopping and she spent $18.92 at the bookstore, $38.03 at the grocery store, and $129.76 at a department store. What is the total amount of money Allison spent? 
And if you remember, total means that we're adding. So we're going to take each of these three values and add them all together. We have our $18.92, our $38.03, and our $129.76. Notice we've got those all lined up and the decimal points all lined up. So now we have 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 6 is 11, we're carrying the 1. And we have 10 plus 7 is 17, we're carrying the 1 again. And we have 17 plus 9 is going to be 26, we carry the 2. So then we have 6 plus 2 is 8, and 1. So if we've added that correctly then, the total that she spent was $186.71. Now what if we wanted to do an estimate to make sure that we got a reasonable answer? How about if we just rounded each of these to the nearest dollar? That would make this 19, that would make this a 38, and that would make this a 130. And we could add this a little bit more easily. 9 plus 8 is 17. And we have 2, 5, 8. So we'd end up with 187. And that, if we took our exact answer and rounded it to the nearest dollar, we would get 187. So that means we do have a reasonable answer. Now looking at the same situation, if we go back to when Allison was at the grocery store, she paid with a $50 bill. We want to know what her change was. So if she spent $38.03. We want to know what the difference is between $50 and $38.03. And that will give us her amount for her change. Difference means that we're subtracting. So we're actually taking 50 minus 38 three one hundredths. Here again, we don't have that many places on our top values, so we add a decimal point and write the zeros in. That way we can do our borrowing. So we're going to have to borrow and make that a 10. We have to borrow here and make that a 9. We're actually borrowing here and making that a 9. We have to borrow there and make that a 4. So now we have 10 minus 3 is 7. 9 minus 0 is 9. 9 minus 8 is 1, and 4 minus 3 is 11. This tells us her change was $11.97. Now again, if we wanted to do an estimate to make sure we got a reasonable answer there, actually for this one, let's just round these to the nearest tens place. So 50 would still be 50. If we round 38 and 3 hundredths to the nearest tens place, that would give us 40. These are very easy to subtract. We would just get 10. And remember, we're just trying to find out if we got a reasonable answer. So we wanted to know if this is even in the ballpark. If we had done our estimate and come out with something like 100, then we would know that this was not a reasonable answer.